We ended the last screencast talking about tonsils. So this is part two of the lymph system. We talked about how the tonsils are located in areas where you're likely to bring in microorganisms through the mouth and through the nose, how the pharyngeal tonsils, when they're inflamed, are called adenoids, and how they can be taken out. Um, it is said that if you have your tonsils taken out, that you may be more prone to sore throats. But again, if they're constantly infected, then they almost need to be taken out. Here is a picture of the inflamed adenoids. Again, they can sometimes use a station tube. Um, here's the nasal septum between the right and left sides of the nose, and you can see that it could definitely inhibit the amount of air that a person could bring in, in terms of breathing. There's a structure called the mucosa associated lymphatic tissue, or MALT for short. It consists of the appendix, pyres patches, and pyres patches are located along the, the intestines, and the tonsils make up MALT. Again, the two systems where you're most likely to bring in microorganisms into the body are your respiratory and digestive system. So that's why these structures are located where they are to help protect from infection. Um, most people you hear about with appendix that there's no really need for the appendix. And while a person can live without it, it has been shown that it actually is able to replenish the large intestine or the colon with uh, good bacteria. So you have billions of bacteria in your intestine. You actually have 10 times more bacteria in your intestine than you do body cells. And keeping these and keeping the ones healthy are important. And the appendix may be important for supplying the large intestine with those healthy bacteria. It's also sometimes difficult in children to determine whether they're having an appendicitis or not. Uh, because children can't explain their pain as well, and some of the x-ray technique techniques don't work as well, in about 10 to 15 percent of the cases where they do a surgery, they actually, when they get in there, they find that the appendix is not the problem. So they're working on new techniques and new testing measures to make sure that th this, the child is having an appendicitis before they go in and try to take it out. The spleen. The spleen uh, initi can initiate immune response. It's also, you think of it as filtering the blood. You can live without a spleen. Um, it's helpful to have one. One of the dangers of the spleen is because it has such a large blood supply that if it's damaged, the person can actually internally bleed to death if uh, damage to the spleen has occurred and it's not caught quickly enough. Uh, a few years ago in the NFL, a quarterback, who's Chris Sims, who is Phil Sims' son, uh, played for the Buccaneers and he must have got hit a certain way during the game. Uh, they didn't catch it and he went several hours with his, with his spleen actually bleeding and luckily they caught it before he uh, bled to death and they had to take his spleen out. It removes abnormal blood cells. It's involved in the recycling of blood cells and it's a storage area for iron from the recycled blood cells. If you remember the iron from red blood cells, most of it is not lost. Most of it is actually recycled as red blood cells are destroyed. And again, it's involved with red blood cell production in the fetus. And it also stores blood platelets, which you remember are involved with blood clotting. Where the spleen is located, again, on many of the models, it really doesn't give you a good indication of where it's located. Uh, they've taken the small intestines out here so you can see things, and the spleen is located up in here, up in this kind of a flap in front here. On your models, it shows it like it's attached to the lung way uh, in the posterior, and it's not. It's actually closer to the front. The thymus. The thymus is a large accumulation of lymphoid tissues. Um, it's not involved, though, in attacking foreign antigens. It's involved with the maturation of T cells, uh, T lymphocytes, early in life. When you get into the immune system, we'll talk about T cells and B cells. T cells are those that mature in the thymus, and that's why they're called T cells. So what happens is, early in life, as your immune system is maturing, the thymus is significant and these T cells are maturing. As you get into your teen years and your immune system is, is becoming mature, the thymus will get smaller and smaller. It's located down below the thyroid gland, close to the heart. And this kind of gives you an idea of where the thymus is. So in an adult, this, this area will be uh, much, much, much smaller and insignificant. And that's the end of the lymph system. Again, you are responsible for this material. I'm not going to go over it in class, so if you have any questions, again, you need to make the effort to uh, 
get me the question so I can answer it again. Asking in class would be great because other students may have the same question. And again, so make sure you review this before the next test.